throughout the United States, in particular in California and parts of our state from Chelan to Walla Walla, there are vineyards everywhere. And there was a time in my life, because I like good wine, that I thought I would love to own a vineyard. I'd love to sit by and watch the grapes grow and have some people there make the grapes into wine and I taste the wine and eat cheese. <laughs> I thought, won't that be great? Vineyards are beautiful. It's, it's picturesque, but what we know that vineyards take time. They have to be planted, they have to be cared for, and they have to be nurtured. And in our lives, we are a vineyard. We are brought into this earth from a God who desires us to live in a holy freedom, a freedom that is dependent upon Him. And there are things in our life that will detract from growing good fruit. And Jesus Christ wanted to help the elders understand why He came. And the purpose of his mission on earth. And I just want to say this, that each and every one of you have a mission here on earth. Each and every one of you are called to have an identity that is not in what you do, but it's in who you are. So let's look at this parable. Let's look at what he says. Number one, who are the tenants? That's those people who are just going to take care of it. God gives us, we're the tenants. You and I are the tenants. Okay. The Pharisees are the tenants. We're given the ability, we're given arms and legs and a mind and desire and choice to make the right choices in one life to grow the right kind of of fruit, the best kind of wine. What we have to understand in this parable, the landowner who planted the vineyard gave it to the tenants to produce good fruits. What does that say about God? That God is not just generous, He is beyond generous. He, he gives us so much more than we even realize, but yet so many times that we don't want that generosity. When it was the vintage time we drew near, he sent his servant to the tenants to obtain produce. Okay. And what are we growing in our life that will be given away? See? We'll get our job, we'll do everything that we're supposed to do in life, but what's the fruit that's being born in your life? And that is a big question for young people and people in, generous, in, in, in generations to come. Are we bearing a generous spirit or a self-centered spirit? I hate to say it, but the college campuses of our world, and it is just the nature of it, it's not even a negative, is really, for the four or five years that you're here, is really predicated on not you being generous, but you obtaining knowledge so that you can go be generous. So this is a season in your life that you get to learn how to be generous because of the time that God's given you here in these last four years. Any parent here who understands that, who pays for their son or daughter to go to college, just please use our generosity to you to bear good fruit. And if we're not using it, that it's going to go to waste. That the vineyard is well equipped with everything that the tenant needs. And that's God's generosity. God has given each and every one of us everything we need in life to be happy. Amen? We have to understand that everything that God has given us, we can be happy with. But where are we taking advantage of the things that God has given us to be happy? There are things placed in our life. You know, I think about these 
poor young men and young women who were at a concert in Israel a day and a half ago. I want you to understand where we are as a culture and where we are as a world on Sunday morning. That one country has declared war on another country and another country has bombed. I mean, who does that? And it's gone on for years and years and years that, that we are in a, in, in a culture and in a society in the world that does not respect the tenants. The tenants are taking advantage of what? The vineyards that God has given us. And the vineyards that God has given you is a sharp mind. And he's given you choice. And he's given you freedoms. And we as Americans must understand that. We must understand that all that we've been given is a beautiful gift. And where is our whiny spirit at times? You ever have like wine sessions? I'm not talking about drinking. <laughs> I'm talking about woe is me sessions. Oh, I wish my life wasn't this. I wish I had this. My life's this. Life is too hard here. And we whine and we whine and we whine. And what does God do in the midst of the vineyard? Well, I'm going to send my son. I'm going to send my son to be, help these people be reasonable. I gave them everything. And what did they do? It's like, hey, we know who this guy is. This is, this is the owner. Let's take him. Let's destroy him. The owner left everything to the tenants for, to produce fruit. And when he went to what? To get what was his, they killed him. That's Jesus Christ. In Isaiah that we read, it's that God is forming a people. God is forming a people to be his own. If you want to be happy in this life, make God the center of your life. Amen. Amen. That, it doesn't mean you're going to have, you're not going to have struggles. It doesn't mean, that it has nothing to do with that. Making Christ the center of your life does not equal a happy life. Making Christ the center of your life is a fulfilled life. It's a meaningful life. It's a life worth living. But the tenants were self-absorbed. They were talking and thinking about themselves. God trusts us enough to give us the freedom to run our life as we choose. Amen? He, he, he trusts us enough. He doesn't manipulate you. He gives you that option. But we know that when we bring in things into our life, life equals sadness. Last night, got done watching the USC game. It's here, and some of the guys were out here. The fire pit went out there, and pretty tired, sat down. What's funny is I was just in street clothes. I wasn't in my collar, and I sat next to this kid, and this kid had a few beers in him. Looked at me. I said, hey, what's your name? He told me his name. And he was listening to a song called Oceans. How many remember Oceans? The song Ocean, the worship song. And it's a song about grace and about mercy. And he just wanted to listen to it. As we began to unpack what this young man was going through, is, he said to me, he goes, my mom marries all the wrong people. Ugh. I can't stand my stepfather. I don't like my real father. And I just asked him these questions about what is that like? He didn't choose any of that. He didn't choose a lot of the pain and the struggle. And, and each and every one of us at times don't choose it. Sometimes it chooses us. But what are we going to do here this morning if certain things have chosen us? And how are we going to respond? God trusts us enough so that we can choose. This parable talks about God's because he keeps sending people in to be reasonable. So when we look at what are we building our life on, it says at the very end, did you not read the scriptures when it said, 
The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and the cornerstone is what keeps the foundation of your life from crumbling. By the Lord it has been done, and it's a wonderful thing in his eyes. God delights to see you be built up. God delights to see you successful, amen? He wants you to be successful. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be full of joy. He wants you to be full of hope. A game won or a game lost is just a game, but a game played well and fulfilled is successful. A battle won is successful. I'm in the midst of watching the amazing series called The Band of Brothers, which is an amazing mini-series by and about 13,000, 14,000 men paratrooping into Germany before D-Day. And it's about a particular company that journey and it's a true story and in it there is a great quote that I pulled out and I would say this is what in the midst of warfare in the midst of struggle in the midst of like oh father you don't know what I'm in the midst of it this is what it says this is it says this is that when they are found in compact closest to their brotherhood they ever knew they found what? Selflessness. They found that they could love the other guy in the foxhole more than themselves. They found that in war, men who love life would give their lives for them. When you love your life because God gave you your life, and when you recognize that, then you can give it away freely. You can die for those who are in need. That's what this parable is about. You want to bear good fruit, good fruit in your life? Give it away. Give your life away to something bigger than yourself, and you will change the world in which you're living. And it might mean your community, it might mean your family, whatever it might be, when you give it away, you'll be given more than you've ever realized. Because God's generous beyond measure. But when you hold back and when you play the tenant, the tenant is the victim, the tenant is look at me, the tenant is the selfish one, the tenant of those, those, those things in the world is, the tenant is the bank account, the tenant is my popularity, the tenant is, the tenant is, is, is my behavior, the tenant is versus the tenant of love, the tenant of mercy, the tenant of goodness. I desire that you all bear fruit in your life. And in your life, some crops go bad sometimes, and that's not always a bad thing. In the midst of our life, let us never forget that God is generous beyond all means, and he desires only to give us the best fruit. Let him be the cornerstone 